The Farman Touraba was a civilian aircraft based on Farman's F-46 trainer. A biplane with a pusher prop, it could carry a pilot and two passengers. In late 1919, the French company sent a plane and a pilot, Louis Gobert, to the United States in hope of drawing up some business. Louis was accompanied by his wife and his daughter Giselle, aged five. One or both of them would often accompany him on demonstration flights. Based at New York's Roosevelt Field, they toured the East and made a few sales. Gobert and his family returned to France a few years later, saying he needed a more modern airplane to compete in the American market. American businessman John Larson formed a partnership with the German Junkers Aircraft Company to assemble and sell their F-13 monoplane in the United States. The F-13 was the world's first all-metal airplane and one of the most advanced aircraft designs of its time. Larson's first version of the F-13 was the JL-6, a passenger and airmail plane. The military version, the JL-12, was something else altogether. It was equipped with 28 downward-facing machine guns that could be fired by remote control, plus two more outside the cockpit. The idea was that it could be used to strafe troops on the ground. One problem with it was that the gun's ammunition was exhausted in a few minutes. Larson optimistically estimated that all 28 guns could be reloaded in flight in just four minutes. Though the Army showed polite interest in the plane, no orders were forthcoming and the JL-12 was never duplicated.
Otto Lilienthal was one of the pioneers of aviation, building and flying a series of gliders in Germany. His first flights were in 1891, and his last was in 1896, when he suffered fatal injuries in a glider crash. This film, taken in Germany in 1926, shows a glider club attempting to fly one of Lilienthal's 1896 gliders. In the months after Lindbergh's transatlantic flight, almost anything related to flying was news. So when inventor Lehman Weil unveiled his ornithicopter in September 1927, the press was there. By his own account, Mr. Weil had been experimenting with model planes since the 1890s. After testing a model of the ornithicopter in the spring of 1927, he proceeded to build this full-size prototype. Mr. Weil, born in 1861 and died in 1940, had one patent to his name for a washing machine that was granted in 1898. In 1912, San Francisco inventor Henry Van V was granted a patent for a parachute airplane. He claimed that it would be able to take off vertically and descend safely. In 1928, he demonstrated a model of the plane for the movie tone cameras. In May 1927, the Guggenheim Foundation announced a $150,000 competition for a safer design of airplane. There were specific requirements for takeoff, climbing ability, stability in flight, and short low-speed landings. By late 1929, the competition was down to two planes, a British entry from Handley Page and the Curtis Tanninger. Curtis engineers, led by Robert C. Osborne, worked on the plane for two years prior to the deadline. Key parts of the design were the slots and flaps to provide increased lift and the ailerons for stability. The wing slots were a source of controversy because Hadley Page held the patents on them. This gave rise to a number of lawsuits.
In January 1930, the plane put on a show for the press, and Emory S. Land of the Guggenheim Foundation presented C.M. Keyes, president of Curtis Aircraft, with the $100,000 winner's check. Just six months later, the Tanager caught fire on the ground and was destroyed. <laughs> 